this is a thread that was put out by a, a, a small streamer you all may know by the name of Vosh. Um, once again, happy birthday, Vosh. Uh, sick ass, uh, sick ass thing to have another birthday. Uh, a sign of surviving in this hell ass world for another year, which is poggers, of course. Uh, and also in perfect compliance with rule number one, do not die. If you are around to celebrate another birthday, you have not died, which means you followed rule number one. Yeah, exactly. See, Vosh knows. Vosh follows rule number one. Why don't you? Well, okay, technically you are if you're watching right now. But if you know anybody who's at risk, if not, shut up. Follow rule number one. Don't fucking die. Unless you're a zombie. But then it's a form of life. Okay, shut up. Let's read the thread, okay? Let's read the fucking thread. Here we go. <clears throat> a thread on recent drama. Whatever our disagreements are or their origins, I don't feel I've been sufficiently clear on the point that Noah Sampson has always been an incredibly forthcoming and decent in private communication, which is more than I can say for basically anyone else I've disagreed with on the left. When I have se severe disagreements with others on the left, I often can't tell the level of malice involved on their end. Are they honest misunderstandings? Dishonest attacks for clout? I can never really know, but my assumptions inform my behavior. I'm obviously going to be much more harsh to, harsh to a person I think is being willfully or negligently dishonest. I am generally reviled outside my community. There's a ton of clout to be had in attacking me. I'm not really good at making that assessment, though. Not good enough for my liking. I refuse to treat obvious smears on my character as good faith criticisms, but the opposite, errantly ascribing ill intent, is no better, possibly worse even. Every attack, good faith or bad, compounds and provides further evidence to supply the next one. People think less of me, so I'm attacked, and so people think less of me. It's endless and unavoidable, as are, to be honest, my retorts. Last stream, I wondered aloud, could Noah Sampson's kindness and straightforwardness in DMs actually be a ploy, a way of tricking me into interpreting bad faith criticisms as well-intentioned, some play on my empathy? This is clearly irrational thinking and deeply paranoid. It's not impossible, true, but it's more likely that. It, but is it more likely than him just being nice and having disagreements in spite of that? If I go down that road, everything is an attack. I am disappointed in my own paranoia and standoffishness, though I do believe both are fair and expected results of the treatment I've received in this space. That said, unfairness from people broadly is no excuse for unfair unfairness towards everyone else. I don't like the character this drama has taken. Noah Sampson recently privated his recent video, a move I had specifically requested. Seeing him do so also didn't bring me any joy. Why? Well, I imagine Noah must be quite stressed right now, which I don't like. This is an acknowledgement of stress, of conciliation. Uh, uh, things are simpler for me when people are brazen and spiteful, where nobody changes or grows, so my opinion of them never has to change. This is, of course, revealing of a problem in how I deal with these situations. When I criticize people, I never actually expect them to listen to me, because, overwhelmingly, they do not. Whatever our disagreements, and there are many, Noah has indicated infinitely more interest in actually hearing me out than almost anyone else, ever, and I was so paranoid about getting bad faith cucked that I treated that interest like a debate tactic. I am tired of this drama, and many other adjacent dramas. Noah deserves praise for unlisting his video, and I look forward to its sequel, even if I may still vehemently disagree with its contents. To be clear, I am not retracting a single criticism I've made. I'm only reflecting on the fact that my system for dealing with the hate I receive doesn't always position me well for engagements with people who are disagreeable but not malicious. An unfortunate consequence of my confused response is the fact that my computer is my community is also heavily gal galvanized against Noah. There are far, far, far more deserving targets for derision, even within the left. I agree. And if Noah had never been decent to me in DMs, never offered to talk with me on stream, something I explicitly want when I have disagreements with a video essayist, would this have beget so much coverage, so many negative feelings? Am I not essentially punishing someone for beha for good behavior, or at least indicating that engaging in behavior I prefer leads to worse outcomes? That's absolutely insane. Anyway, enjoy the enormous thread. I had to do something while my nuggies baked. <laughs> so, what made me think of this was people saying, like, that Hassan is probably, you know, nervous about uh, getting attacked. About the car and the house and whatever, and so he's probably responding. But I don't think that's a good excuse. I, uh, I don't. Um... And this is something that uh, I myself have had to grapple with, though to a, a lesser, de a significantly lesser degree, well, or perhaps a different, a different degree. Um, 
as we all know, uh, I too am someone who have received uh, an incredible amount of uh, of of outright hatred um, by a lot of people uh, in these online spaces, and it makes me very unlikely to want to talk to anybody. And and the thing is, is that like like my response to all of this has been different even than Vosh's. You know, uh, Vosh is even more debatey than than I am. Uh, I like to debate, but I don't know. Like, first of all, people usually don't ever want to debate with me um, for some, you know, for a couple of reasons. But secondly, um, I also just, when, when I don't like somebody, I usually don't want to talk to them. Like, if I think somebody is uh, annoying to me, I don't want to fucking talk to them. I just want to yell at them and then forget about them. Um, but what I do very much, uh, what I do very much, I guess resonate with from what Vosh has said here is that is that feeling of paranoia, um, and I think it's something that content creators don't talk about very frequently. Um, something that's been a problem um, for basically anyone who gets any level of notoriety in any space for a long time, but it's especially weird being a streamer or a YouTuber where you're constantly receiving immediate, instantaneous around the clock feedback whether through comments through twitter through dms through uh you know people talking about you on your discord channels it's 24 fucking hours you know a day seven days a week you can be receiving personal attacks of uh, uh personal attacks genuine criticisms uh you know loving critique all this all this stuff and it can be it is at times, literally impossible to sort through it all. Um, and I think that's, uh, I think that's, I think it's really fucking cool of Vosh to open up about that in, in, a, in the way that he did it, on a public forum specifically so that his fan base can recognize that, you know, not every disagreement on the internet is a giant community beef. Um, and also that uh, community beefs aren't actually really the norm outside of certain engagements. This is something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, you know, you all probably know, if you follow my Twitter, uh, you know that I, uh, like, formally discussed leaving Twitch politics while I was on my, uh, while I was recovering from COVID. Uh, I can open my tweet about this. Um, you know, uh, if I can, it'll take me a bit to pull it up here. Um, but... Uh, while I was recovering from COVID, I, I you know, posted a, a, a tweet about how, you know, the reasons why I left or why I consider myself no longer a part of Twitch politics. And uh, I think one of the reasons is specifically what Vosh is talking about here, that the way that the space operates is so belligerent, it gets you trapped in a cycle of, uh, of, of aggressive paranoia where... Uh, you're so used to being beset by criticisms. You're, it's, it becomes impossible to tell the difference between good faith and bad faith or nearly impossible. And that can be a very, uh, let's say, a dementing effect. It can make your life miserable. It can make your outlooks on other people miserable. It can make your outlooks on other creators miserable. And it can severely impact your creative process. Because if every single day you're booting up your computer and thinking about how, wow, uh, there's just a bunch of people on the internet who fucking hate my guts, who are going to lie about me all the time, and that's all that there is, and that's what's preeminent in your mind, uh, you you stop caring about creating shit. You stop, you, you, you're you just like, why would I bother putting in the effort if people are just going to say I'm a piece of shit? And so, um, I don't know if there's a, there's no, I don't think there's any magical solution to this. I don't even think there's like a mindset change or anything. I think it's just very good to be aware of it. And personally, I want to say a uh, big thumbs up for that statement because uh, I think that statement was really strong. Um, I've been thinking on it for a couple days and I think it's a, I think it's a really good thing to bring to the attention of viewers. The idea that like, hey, sometimes we can't tell and sometimes we get paranoid and irrational and it's not a bad it's not a character flaw to to get that or to feel that way but it can become a character flaw if you 
constantly act on that specific mindset. It can become a compromising factor. Um, and I think we should be aware of it. And I think communities should be aware of it. And that communities should recognize that like, um, that there has to be, there has to be sort of lines, you know, we have to recognize, uh, when, when shit is getting out of control. And also as communities, we have to not engage with communities that are constant belligerents. If we're dealing, if you're dealing, if you're surrounding yourself or you're surrounded by a fuckload of belligerent communities, it makes sense that you will develop as a survival technique or a survival technique of some form, uh, a, a defensive position. If you're being attacked constant, constantly, you will defend yourself. Of course you will, or you'll leave the space. So it makes sense to me that people become defensive. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the reality is that sometimes our survival mechanisms can um, impede us in other arenas, or they can, uh, our, 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 our well-intentioned, uh, effective defensive mechanisms can become, uh, uh, can sort of metastasize into, uh, into bad, into, 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 into bad behaviors or bad approaches. This is what exposure to dangerous levels of DGG does to rational people. That's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today, actually. And I'm going to be pretty explicit about it. Um, because I don't really feel like there's any need to not be explicit about it. I do think that DGG is one of those belligerent communities. It's a, it is a belligerent community that creates other militant communities because the only way to survive when you're constantly being, uh, bombarded by a belligerent community is to pick up arms in response. Gayfesh says, when I was in middle school, if I heard someone say my name, my defenses were immediately up because I was so bullied that I just expected it, even if it was a friend. You see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That is a rational uh, defense mechanism that can become irrational in certain circumstances. And it's not, you're not a bad, no one is a bad person for having those mechanisms. In fact, we need them to survive. But it's important that we're critical of them, that we're aware of how they operate. And I think um, the reason why I'm, I'm making such a big deal about this statement from Vosh is because I think it's important sometimes to let our audiences in on that as well. Um, given that we're in this frontier of, 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 uh, streaming socializing, um, you know, I think that there's like, I think there's a lot of benefit that can come from being open and transparent about some of these complicated, um, emotional issues that creators deal with um you know obviously you know let's put aside the like inherent you know i guess the the inherent uh self-centeredness of content creation in the modern era that aside uh you know not everything is about all the content creators but i think it's valuable for content to creators to open up about stuff like this because most of the time um to be honest it's just it's just a mill of of constant demand for content creation, a, a, a mill of, of wanting to squeeze out the next drama or whatever. And as it turns out, you can do that. The, the, the algorithm will reward you for becoming a belligerent, even if that's not what you want to be. So that all of that said, that does not mean that there isn't a time to fight. That does not mean that there isn't a time to go hard. It just means that we have to be aware of when we choose to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, here we go. Here's my tweet. Not to like just do immediately do a tweet, but here's here's this. This is why at the end of last year, I finally said I was done with Twitch politics. It's not a space or a community. It's a crumbling echo chamber of unhinged toxic views, interpersonal abuse, and targeted harassment. Women are treated like shit. Rape is normalized. And then I was talking about um, uh, here we have some some uh fucking vulture account uh called twitch politics and debate schedules uh just going panel topic responding to um a discussion about sexual assault and rape panel topic and then merrick who is based by the way says horrendously inappropriate rape isn't a casual panel topic and then they respond you should debate the issue on stream with the omni liberal or mind waves tv do you see? Do you see what I'm fucking saying here? Huh? You see what I'm saying about this? That's fucked. 
You suggest it would be an appropriate serious topic to be debated on Twitch. You could have a serious debate with any of these people on their streams real soon. Star just said on her streams right now that she agrees with the fellas. Like, can I, can we just acknowledge how she agrees with the fellas? Like, there is so much wrong with this. And this is, this is exactly why. I want nothing to do with Twitch politics. Whatever Twitch politics calls, whatever it is. You went away from Twitter, legit to personalize? Yeah, it's bad. It's fucking bad. And we're going to talk about it more in depth. Um, but, you know, all of this kind of ties together. Because uh, uh, the reason that we've sort of gone from talking about this or from talking about Vosh's statement to talking about the toxicity in Twitch politics, I think these things are are very, very linked. Um, I think this, the same forces that lead new content, new political content creators to become incredibly paranoid and on edge and uh, honestly really suffer are, are the, is the exact same thing that we're witnessing over here. And we're going to tie this all together throughout the stream that we're going to do today. The panels were awful to me. Yes, they were. Um, yeah, they were. Uh, and I stopped. I retired from the panel scene. I don't do panels anymore because uh, it sucked. Rip to Chud Knight, still the only good panel show. Chud Knight was fun. Okay, Chud Knight was... Okay, I've thought about a lot what made Chud Knight special. And I think what made Chud Knight special was that there was a genuine understanding of, like, uh, uh, of, of cooperation. Even though huge disagreements um, on that panel, there was an understanding that, hey, we're all small creators here. We're not here to kill each other. We're here to discuss things, to make a good show. And I think that's what made Chud Knight special, was that there was genuine bonds between the creators involved. Even people who had tensions with one another. You ended Twitch politics by getting D to admit that he was a, p a piece of shit. Uh, I... I don't think Twitch politics is done for, but I think tr Twitch politics is transforming. I'm about to uh, I'm about to talk about that real quick. I don't think that Twitch politics is is I mean I I do think it's a crumbling mess, um, but I think it's transforming into something much worse. Uh, listen, uh, hippy dippy. Uh, I was a part. I was like a, a like a like an artery for hippy dippy. I think I was on the second episode ever. I can't remember if it was the first, second, or third episode of Hippy Dippy ever that I was on. Um, and I've been on so many episodes of Hippy Dippy. But the problem, there's there were a couple of problems that were plaguing Hippy Dippy and that I think still plague Hippy Dippy to this day. Um, and uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I've been going, yes. If you go back and watch the old ones, um, you will see I've been on the, I've been, the panel scene was my fucking uh, 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 yeah, well, thank you, Rhodes. I appreciate that. Um, a lot of people discovered me through Hippy Dippy, but the thing that happened increasingly over time <clears throat> is that Hippy Dippy became chained to spe a, a, a couple of specific personalities. And originally, Hippy Dippy stood as a, as a, uh, bombastic, high, high performance, um, uh, 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 debate show where a bunch of big personalities come in and, and, and debate and then you leave it at the door and leave. Um, but, uh, but over time, I mean, when I went to the championship, there were multiple questions that were just directly targeted. They were formulated and framed as, uh, as pres like essentially they were my drama and they were presuming that I was wrong in my drama. So like an example of this was um, the self-medication topic, self-med, self-diagnosis, which was something that an, a take from weeks and weeks prior that I was getting canceled for and my own cancellation became a topic on the panel, which is just like, like that's not, that's not, and then this, ha this shit happens over and over again and it's become a continual issue. It's, I don't think it's because I don't think you know I've thought about that a lot it wasn't so much about leaning into the pro wrestling aesthetic that was the problem I think the pro wrestling aesthetic was really fun the problem was it became hitched because of the because of the community composition it became hitched 
to whatever Destiny and DGG wanted to talk about, that was the topics that was the panel topics. It became, in function, the entire panel show began to orbit Destiny. And that's not fun for me. That's not fun at all. I don't think that's fun for most people. And, um, and so, I, I don't know. I, I just... Yeah, it, it ruined, and, and, and the vibe has been fucked. Every panel's vibe is fucked. Do you guys, do you, wait, can you admit that you're also just a little bitter that I lost? I didn't lose. That's the thing, nuts. I didn't get the belt, but I won. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows that I won that night. Everybody knows my arguments were the best, that the, the panel topics were slanted against me. I don't need the belt, and I don't care. Louis boy, uh, by the way, are you and Dylan cool or are we still not really on good terms? Um, I wouldn't say we're not, we're not like on bad terms. I just, I, I don't know. I haven't had the, I've been recovering from COVID. I've talked, I've talked to Dylan since we talked about COVID a little bit. We both sort of talked about our experience with COVID. I don't hate Dylan. Um, I don't think, I don't think I'm, I don't think it's possible for me to hate Dylan. I really, you know, Dylan and I were close friends. We're not as close as we used to be. That trust was damaged during the RGR situation severely. I've been very open about that. I don't, there's no drama or anything involved in that. I just felt like um, Dylan's behavior in the RGR drama was not only personally offensive because it was attacking, it was attacking, it was functionally declaring that I was a liar and that Doe was a liar, but also really irresponsible. And I don't know, it just, it fucked the trust. So, yeah. But, but no, I don't have like deep problems with Dylan. I don't hate Dylan. I don't think Dylan's a bad person. It's just our, 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 our trust got destroyed. So, yeah.